there! I'm Cindy Linden, and this is a Cook Along Podcast Quick Bite. Today I want to talk about pepper. I grew up with ground black pepper in a shaker. I, I didn't care for it much. I came of age during the whole, the larger the pepper grinder the server uses to season your dish, the more expensive the restaurant thing. When it became all the rage to grind your own peppercorns for both cooking and at the table, I joined the bandwagon. During all that time, I have never been a black pepper aficionado. I use it in cooking, but I don't add it to my food at dinner. I've recently found a type of pepper that I really do like, and I'm learning to experiment with it, using more pepper than I ever have before, although still not at the table. As a cook, I guess I decided it was time for me to learn more about peppercorns, and it's pretty interesting stuff. We're all probably aware that pepper has played a big role in world history. I learned the other day that in 408 AD, the Goths demanded pepper as part of their tribute when they laid siege to Rome, and later pepper was traded ounce for ounce with gold. You got that? Ounce for ounce with gold and used as currency to pay their rents or their taxes or dowries for young ladies getting married or whatever. It's been the motivation for domination of many smaller countries of the world by the larger countries of the world because once tasted, everyone wanted it. It was capable of hiding a whole lot of food shortcomings both when things were too bland and um, overripe, shall we say, and starting to smell, you know, just bad. All true peppercorns, it turns out, grow in clusters like grapes on the Piper nigrum spice plant, which is a perennial climbing vine native to India's Malabar coast. It's Little tendrils bear these peppercorn clusters on dense, slender spikes, and the pepperberries turn a yellowish red at maturity, like uh, like red currants. Pepper is, of course, the world's most popular spice, and you know what? It's even good for you. It's good for your digestion because it stimulates your gastric juices. Although it's mostly used in savory foods. It can also show up sometimes in baked goods, like sweetbreads and cakes, and some people like it with fruit. It brings out the flavor of other spices, and it retains its own flavor really well during cooking. Unlike some things, which if you put them in too early, the smell and the taste are going to kind of vanish by the time you serve it. Pepper doesn't do that. The best quality pepper is Indian Malabar which is the kind I recently started using. I did not know it was the best quality pepper. It just was the one that I found that I prefer over what I've had before. It's got kind of a fruity aroma and a clean bite, and it's not too hot and not too dominant of a flavor. The telecherry peppercorn of India is best known for its balanced flavor and its fine aroma, which is described by some people as warm and woody and lemony. It's the most common whole peppercorn grade because it has the largest berries. So it makes it less expensive, right? It's good stuff, but it's too peppery for me. Pepper has different characteristics based on its different places of origin, and it is classified according to where it's grown. The flavor is determined by its essential oil content, which is in the skin, while the content of its piperine accounts for its bite or its heat, if you want to call it that. And as I said, the pepper vine produces all true peppercorns, but they are sold in three different varieties. Variations, I guess I should say that. Obviously, the most used is black pepper. For black pepper, the berries are picked while they're still unripe. They're briefly immersed in boiling water, and then they're left to dry in the sun. Sun drying is preferred 
because if you dry them at high temperatures in artificial heat, some of the volatile oils are lost. And you don't want that because that's what makes them smell good. Within a few days of sitting in the sun, the skin shrivels and blackens to what we know and love. Black peppercorns are best cracked or ground just prior to cooking or serving so the flavor and aroma are still strong. Black pepper has, by the way, the strongest flavor of the three types. You may have come across green peppercorns. Green peppercorns are the unripe seeds of that same pepper spice plant. In other words, the same peppercorns are picked while they're still unripe and then they're immediately soaked in brine. They come in two usual varieties, freeze-dried or air-dried. And apparently, although I've never seen these, you can find them packed in brine or water or vinegar. And then they're, I don't know, I picture them like capers, you know, like a condiment you keep in your refrigerator. But I haven't done that, and nor have I seen them, as I said. The green variety, when it's dried, has a mild, fresh, and almost kind of herby quality that pairs well with vegetables and poultry and seafood. It's less pungent than the black, and it has a more subtle flavor. And this may be of interest. They seem to taste salty. So green peppercorns can be a great flavor booster for those of you who might be watching your sodium intake. I have people ask me all the time what to use when you can't have salt anymore. This is one possibility. You're probably also aware of white pepper, which is mostly used in pale sauces and cream soups so that the creamy look of the recipe isn't messed up by a bunch of black specks. It is the same fruit left longer on the vine and allowed to fully ripen, and they get picked when they're yellowish red. After they're harvested, the outer husk is softened by soaking and then left to dry and rubbed off in water or, or by a machine. And the skin is then removed and the berry is dried in the sun. Because they remain on the vine the longest, they're at the greatest risk of drying out before harvesting or being washed away by the rains. That's why you're often going to find that they're more expensive than the black or the green. White pepper has kind of a sharp bite. And as it ages, it gets stronger. It has less of the actual oil because the oil is in the skin, in which they rub off on the white ones. So even though the flavor is strong, with those oils missing, it does not have much of a smell. As I said, it's kind of sharp, but it has sort of a kind of sweet-ish afternote. But pay attention to this. It can develop kind of a musty smell and a musky flavor unless it's freshly ground. So it's best to grind it as you need it and do it on a fine setting on your pepper grinder. You might come across a couple of other types of peppercorns. There are pink ones, which are beautiful to look at. They are the fruit of a tree related to the cashew family, which is the bay's rose plant. The plant is a native to South America, specifically Madagascar, and it's used more for the way it looks, because as I said, it's really pretty, than its taste. It has a kind of a tangy, sweet, but really delicate flavor. And the berries are imported through France, which is why they can be kind of expensive. Once upon a time, by the way, there was widespread controversy about the safety of pink peppercorns, but that's all old news. They're now approved by the FDA. You may also have heard someone talk about Szechuan peppercorns, which became a fad thing because they fizz on your tongue, and so young people were <laughs> buying black Szechuan peppercorns for the fizz factor. They are a spicy and fragrant flavor, but they're also not true peppercorns. They're an aromatic reddish berry with a black inner seed and kind of a peppery bite to them. Now, after all this, you may be wondering how important it is to grind your own pepper. Like, can you just get by with the ground pepper you've always used in your kitchen and on the table? Well, I saw an issue of Cook's Country magazine in which they talked about doing a taste test. 
and one day old and freshly ground samples of black pepper had a strong peppery aroma and a complex, potent, fresh flavor, they said. But older samples tasted muted, and that's because once you grind it, the aromatic compounds had begun to dissipate, and so it was just less, less of everything that pepper can be. Whole peppercorns, when they're freshly ground, deliver more flavor than pre-ground pepper, which loses its flavor fairly quickly. Whole peppercorns will keep for about a year, and ground keeps its flavor for only about four months. Okay, so let's talk about storage. Whole black peppercorns will keep up to a year in an airtight container stored in a cool, dry place in your house. Green peppercorns will keep in an airtight container for about six months. White peppercorns maintain their optimal flavor for only about one month. Not good news for those of you trying to keep things backed up and stored in your pantry. Those time estimates all presume you didn't grind them in advance. I know all this information might be cause for some dismay because we've all got pre-ground pepper that has been sitting in various kinds of containers in our homes for far longer than four months. Honestly, I don't plan to change that. But it does help to know that when I use that stuff, I'm choosing convenience over flavor quality. It also means I will be grabbing my pepper grinder instead more often than I used to. If you enjoy my podcast and find this kind of information useful, it would be great if you would visit Kofi, that's ko-fi.com slash the cookalong podcast to make a small donation toward the continuation of the podcast. Tune in two weeks from today for another quick bite. And remember to check in next Saturday for a brand new recipe podcast. Until next time, happy cooking. Happy cooking.